So a primary light source is coming from down below, secondary light source coming from above, but I think it's safe to say that most of this area here is going to be in shadow, and I need that. I need that to help turn my edge here on the lip. So I've got light coming in from the side over there, and I'm just kind of working these shadows. Picturing he's probably wearing mostly dark clothing here, so I'm not going to be afraid to darken things in a bit. All right, this top of the hat I think is going to be darker in there. I'm noticing the hat up top here is layer management. So hope everything's going okay in your world. Not all your art projects are turning out okay. All right, so I think I need to switch for a minute back over here, grab some 20, darken this in a little bit. It's a little repair job up here on this hat. There we go. Hmm. A little bit more to go. I'm getting the illusion of a line up here, and I didn't necessarily want that. Grab a little bit of my 50%. There we go. I think what's happening here 
model too many value overlap. There we go. Hey, Citos, what's up? <laughs> How are you? Thanks for coming by. Oh, really? Nice. Nice. That's great. Has it been a while? There we go. All right. So let's see here. Yeah, what are you up to, Cethos? What else is going on? Thanks for coming by. Aww. <laughs> Already? Already? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Well, an early happy, happy birthday for me. <laughs> That's amazing already. That's incredible. How the time flies, right? And that's how it is. Some of the longest days of your life. But also some of the happiest. Putting a little bit more tone in here. And this is um, just here on these skin tones. I got to be a little bit careful because he's going to have very pale skin, but the lighting is dark. And so therein lies the trick of, you know, implying that something is in shadow, not necessarily something is dark tone. Now, given that he's in London and it's miserable weather a lot of the time and probably doesn't get a lot of sun because he's inside counting the books all the time. Old Scrooge here is probably not going to be the most sun-beaten guy you've ever seen, so probably going to have pretty fair skin, I would guess. So he has to have fair skin, but in shadow. And so value-wise, you have to be thinking a little bit about controlling the overall value of the tone, keeping the tone light, but having enough contrast that you're creating some shadows. So, you know, and, and then, of course, how bright is your light source and things like that. So I think at, the, at this point, I still need to go darker with most everything because I think that in order to bring in the moodiness that I'm looking for, I've got to... I've got to get some of these tones a bit darker. I can always come back in and add a little bit of light, but I think at this point I'm at the stage where more tone is probably the better way to go. So a little light on the edge of the cheekbone there. can always back off a bit if I need to, but I don't think so. I think we're talking about some lights there on the side of his head, but his hat's kind of there, so that's going to knock some of those top layers back. You know, maybe a little bit of lightness on the edge of the ear here. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> My friend Cito's here. I can't believe it's already been a year. <laughs> well, I hope everything's going for you well. Going for going well for you, buddy. So here's one. Um, this brim is probably going to be darker here. This is a dark clothing, so I'm going to feel safe enough to jump up to my layer of 35 and slowly build up the darkness here. I just need enough tone to imply that there's a 
a change in the form catching light on it but that's about it and I really think this hat could stand to be darker so that's why I'm going over this Doing a quick save as, by the way. And by the way, when I'm saving, I usually give it a different name periodically so that I'm not constantly writing over the top. Um, I think this is very saving different versions of it is a better way to go. One time years ago, and this is years ago when I was just getting started in, in my first round doing some professional work um, digitally, in those early days I wasn't saving so many versions. I'd just save right over the top, save over the top, save over the top. And then, of all things, I had a SIM chip in my computer go bad. And it was corrupting everything I was writing. Everything I was saving, it was corrupting. And if I had saved multiple versions more frequently, I wouldn't have had to go back to so far and start over. So I learned my lesson the hard way that you need to save versions in case you have a problem. You can go back to a version that's maybe not as far back as starting from scratch. I don't know if there's any magic rule in terms of you know how often you should save, but um, it's definitely valuable to do that. Okay, a little darker there, pushing the 35, a little 35 percent, a little bit darker, and I don't want to go too dark. Like I said, I don't want it to be black. I want it to be tonal, but not, not too intense either. All right. I like that last bit a little bit lighter. All right. Not bad, not bad. I think I might be ready for uh, another pass between perhaps my 35 and my 50 just to make those a little more of a blend. And there's a there's a number of ways to go about doing this, and it I think depending on you know how smooth I want things to be, I don't necessarily need things to be super smooth. I'm not looking for something that's like blended skin tones, right? I'm looking for something that's um, the trent <laughs> the triple cannon. Wow, was that that was the one you did for me? I think that was the one you did for me, right? Man, that was an awesome drawing. That that made a difference, I think, right? Yeah. And the shaman, yes. Yes, we worked our butts off on those. Those were those were good ones, man. That's been a second now, but but yeah, that the, I those were some great pieces, man. I was really proud of you on that one. I remember that one specifically. Yeah, it's a good lesson, you know. It goes to show you that um that those are good good skills and um, to have. Uh, Sethos is talking about a project I worked with him on, and we did some drawings um, where he really did some neat asset drawings, uh, some concepts, and he did them by hand, and he did them in isometric viewpoint. 
And that's one of the assignments that I, I give and I work with people a lot on is presenting their ideas in a way that allows people to, to really see the um, the aspect ratio. And that's why when you work in those kinds of perspectives like that, what it really is allowing you to do is show the aspect ratio of height to width to depth, right? Three three dimensions in a drawing. Um, people say, well, how is isometric different than, say, just freehand? Like, why not just do freehand? Um, and freehand can do a lot on its own, but designers like to think in terms of, you know, what are this thing's proportions? And the thing that's tricky about freehand perspective is if you're doing it the way we observe it, there's something called foreshortening in there. And foreshortening is really tough to judge aspect ratios, measurements. So we work in things like isometric perspective so that we can really get a sense for what its measurements are. And as in the design phase of things, not, not necessarily the final depiction of it, but in the design phase, those drawings, being able to tell um, what its aspect ratios are and what its proportions are make it easier for other designers to be able to do things like model it or depict it in other ways. So that's a good skill to have to be able to draw things and understand how to depict them in isometric view. And Sethos did a fantastic drawing of a cannon, a design for a cannon that was beautifully done. Beautifully done. And by the way, Sethos also a fantastic modeler, um, animator, but modeler. Um, so yes, a person that also works in 3D as well as being able to bust that out in a nice drawing too. All right, where am I at here? Let me check in on my on my values. So I am working 20% right now, meaning I'm coming back in and darkening some things on my 20% layer that may not have been that dark. And I've if I had to kind of describe what I'm doing here, it's blending those ranges of my first sort of 20% grays gradually smoothening them out a little bit as they move towards the 50% grays. And um, I'm just kind of doing it step by step, working my way down until I feel it's either one smooth enough or it explains the form um, stylistically the way that I want to. So that's that's kind of what we're working on here. I know you can't necessarily, I'm realizing that, you know, this is one of the things about digital that's kind of hard. You can't necessarily see where my cursor's at, but I'm in the face here. And it's, I don't want to get too close because then I, one thing about value when you're working values is they are relative to everything around it. So if you're too close doing values, you run the risk that those value decisions you're making aren't relative to the whole picture. So I don't want to get too close um, but maybe I'll I'll work a little bit closer here to to so you can maybe find my cursor. So I'm up here in the upper right. You can see me moving around, and I'm gonna work a bit on the ear, and then I'm gonna work a bit on I think his scarf, and then I'm gonna jump down to the hands a little bit. So um, so let's see. I'm gonna now go to 35. He's going in on the ear here a little bit. And I'm just working on those shadows a bit to help give that ear just a little bit more, more form to it. Just a little bit of turning those edges to make that ear a little bit softer, a little dimension to the lobe. letting some lights pop out at the same time. I'm also gonna come back here on my scarf a little. You can see down below that I'm darkening in some areas of my scarf. I 
I, I, you know, I'm working in grayscale, so I'm not sure that the scarf would have much color. I'm trying to think if Scrooge had a, a scarf, what color would his scarf be? I don't, I can't imagine it would be a, a very bright color back out. I, I could throw a little color into it maybe later if I want to do the color out. I, I don't think I had any intention of making this a, a color rendering really at all. All right. Now, how old is this Scrooge? I'm kind of getting a little dark on his hair, so I'll either have to paint in some white a little bit later if I want him to be older. I picture... He's probably in his 60s at least, you know, maybe approaching 70s. So by now his hair would probably be have lightened, and I'm a little dark on my tone, so um, I may have to lighten things up. So let's do this. I did the scarf. I did the ear. I was going to do a little bit on the hands, but since I'm here on the face real quick, I'm going to lighten some of this stuff on... And I'm just kind of erasing out some kind of hair shapes. From just his uh, chops here on the side. And again, this is one of those things where I think background will definitely play a role. I will definitely be going in with some some white, I think, later on here. Okay. Well, I think that's enough for now. I just need to create a little bit of tonal difference from the skin tones there. And back of the neck here. And some of these things were actually in on the original drawing, so you know I might I might come back a little bit there. And I'll end up doing some paint over there. Okay. So, Sethos, you're doing good then? Works good? Staying busy? You were doing a graduate program, right? Are you done? It's been a little while since we've caught up, buddy. All right. So his hand. Now, I want the metal of his cane to be kind of shiny feeling. So it, I want it to feel like it's made out of metal. So it needs to feel somewhat reflective. 
which means high contrast, right? So somewhere in there I need the feeling that light is kind of bouncing off of it. Right now I'm doing the 35%. Let's drop down in here so you guys can see a little bit more. I'm going to come down to the hand. So I'm adding in my 35% shading to some of these fingers here to help create a little bit more dimension. And you might say, well, why, why, why separate it? Like, why, why do the values in different layers? Like, why not just shade all one layer like you would on paper? Because um, in this respect, I can adjust it as I go if it's too light, too dark, um, and I have more control over those layers separately. Also, I think as I'm constructing things, thinking in terms of stages or passes of the art really helps speed you up. It took me a while to, to learn that lesson, but, you know, I think in the beginning I spent a lot of time on stages where I, I found that I was actually rendering things more than I needed to. Like I would do a layer of rendering and then another layer of rendering and another, and I was going over the same stuff multiple times. And that was sort of an early painting thing. I was learning how to paint at the same time, but I realized I was wasting a lot of time um, by going over everything so many times. And so as I got faster and started doing more work for clients and stuff that was on deadline, I had to get faster. And any sort of shortcuts that would help speed things up, it, even even down to like how you render things, was was important and could save me time. And I realized that when you create a picture, you need to think of it in passes, not don't do that thing where you get caught in the corner and you render from corner to corner. That's dangerous. For one, you, you make decisions that aren't relative to the whole picture because it's not done yet if you're working in, in, pass, in uh, corner to corner. If you work in passes, you're watching the whole thing develop simultaneously. And then you can make adjustments as you go um, relative to the whole picture. So I found that when I started doing that, working in passes and working in stages, one, I finished faster, but two, I got a result that was just as good as what I was doing before, except I got there faster. So that, that was sort of a lesson that I learned. Um, sort of the hard way, really. Okay, let's see how this hand is looking. A little bit darker now. Okay. Looking pretty good. Go back over to my 50% here. So now just in terms of like method I'm very conscientious about what stage I'm working on and why I'm doing and what it does and that's the way I teach too that's the way I teach my students is to think in terms of stages and passes and to objectively be able to stop and look at the work and say like, well, what does it need now? Where where is it at now, and what what comes next? But that's that's hard. If you're just corner to corner rendering, all you're ever seeing is as much as you've got done, and you don't know what's what's left. Okay, I'm using a seventy percent. I don't know if you can see my cursor down here, but I'm towards the bottom, and I'm working on this cane a little bit, darkening some of these values. You know, some of my sketch lines are there, and they're a bit distracting. I need the cane to really read like it's um, made out of a different material. So I'm, I'm darkening in my values a little bit more. I'm 
All right. Grabbing my 50%. Oh, you're doing a contract? Sorry, see those? <laughs> I was working there. My current ends in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the contracting game, right? That that's That's the tough part about it is that one leads to the next. And that's kind of rough, I think, um, especially maybe in people like your position or our position, um, where, you know, you've got some things relying, you've got responsibilities. And you need that, that you know, some of that stable stable gig is, is, is important. you got people relying on you. Um, the contracting game is tough. Um, I think if you're in a position where you don't have much responsibilities, um, you know, if you're not a parent, you don't have a mortgage, a lot of bills, then you can stay light on your feet and you can do those contracts and jump contract to contract. And that's, you know, it's all about platforming and going up to the next gig and the next gig and getting more experience and building as you go and, and being able to do that as a, as a young person and maybe somebody with a lot less responsibilities is a real advantage because, um, once you start to put your feet down and make some roots, it gets a lot harder to live that way. And that, you know, contracting freelance, that's more or less the same thing. Contracts might be a little longer than a freelance gig. You know, technically a freelance, I guess, is by project, but so is a contract, right? A freelance might be for a, a, a little bit of work. A contract might be for a period of time, right? But it's all temporary. And that that's, that's tough living if you have a lot of responsibility. So I always try to tell my people that are I'm working with that are thinking about contracting or going professional or trying to hit the industry is stay flexible, keep your options open so that you have the ability to follow those contracts as they arise. I've had some opportunities that I'm like, I can't take that one. I can't do that one. <laughs> I can't. I got family, I got things relying, I can't move, I can't relocate, I can't go work on a project. And it's like, that's hard to say no, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Okay, I'm just defining my fingers a little bit more, making that hand pop out a little bit. All right, so let's see. There's the edge of my finger down in there somewhere, and then there's his wrist, and then it's, yeah. Hey, Raider, what's up? What's up, Ray Ray? In the house. Ray Ray, everybody, check him out. Check him out on the Twitch. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Hope all is well with you. Happy New Year. It's been a little while, so I hope you're doing well. Hope the your newest gig is going really well. So uh, I was really pleased for happy for you. Ray Ray. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Glad to hear it. Making the big things happen over there. Ray Ray, I don't know if you know Sethos or not. I know you guys from the same place, but I'm I'm not sure if time periods were the same. Overlap a little bit. Yeah. Can't complain, right? <laughs> 
come on. You can't complain. That's 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 a good sweet gig, dude. That happened so nicely. Proud of you. You worked your butt off for that and um good things happen when you keep plugging away and hey, congratulations to you, man. That's pretty awesome. I hope they know what kind of talent they got in their midst. Some real talents. Ray Ray, everybody, check him out. He's on the Twitches too. Ray, feel free to drop uh drop your promo for your channel into the into the chat, if you will. Raider, I got a Discord channel too. I'd love it if you'd join up, man. And that goes for anybody watching. If anybody would like to uh join up the uh Discord channel, stay in touch. It's a great way. I'd love to keep in touch with people and see what you're up to. Vice versa, check me out. We can stay in touch, drop each other messages. I'd like feedback too. And if you want feedback, I'd love to help you out as well. So check out the Discord. Um Ray, you got a Discord channel? I'm not sure. I can't remember last time I was over there if you had a Discord channel or not. If you do, let me know because I'd like to join up with you over there too. Yeah, Ray, I think you and C you and Citos, I think it's about the same time. We're pretty close. I th you guys know each other, I guess. If you don't, you do now, but you guys share background, so please. <laughs> Friend each other. You guys must have been close. You had to have been close about the same time period. It's very close. Tune in later. I got Q-tip going in my head. In my headset here. Tribe. My bell. I got the ill communication. That's with beasties. Nash. Yes, of course. The K-Nash. K-Nash is on the Discord. <laughs> he drops in every once in a while. He came by here, I don't know, a couple times. You both know know the K Nash. He's doing well too. All my boys are doing awesome. Making me proud. It's really great to be able to talk to you guys again. It's been a long time. Okay, I'm back up in the hat now just for those following along at home. I'm bringing a few more of these lines out towards the edges of the hat here. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, responsibilities, i got to watch my time here. My kiddo's hitting the bed. Does Ken Ash have a channel, by the way? <laughs> oh, you're rigging his stuff? No kidding. Ray Ray, you know, do you know uh, Kane Ash? I think you. Well, yeah, see, again, you guys were very close to the same time period, so it's I can't remember if, how close, but it had to have been close. Without totally, you know, revealing somebody's identity, um, I, think, I think you know. But if you join the Discord, you can find out. Shameless plugging, but um, mostly because I like to keep in touch with you guys, so. From the Vizla! Back in the day, um, yeah, some of you may remember I'm working with some of my old crew again. Um, I'm over at um, the place I'm at now, which some of you may know. 
But uh, some of those same folks that you guys know from back in the day are over there now, too. So it's kind of funny, a small world. All right, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Okay. For, sometimes I even forget which value I'm on. What am I doing here? This has got to be, what, 70? Yeah, this is 70, I think. So I'm going to go to 50. Again, you're like, man, he's all over the place with his values. That's all right. At this point, I'm just, it's a feel thing, right? So I'm, I'm going what feels right. That's what makes it art, folks and not math. Nothing against math, love math. Math was not nice to me at times, but I have nothing against math. I, I love and appreciate math. You know, my dad was a physics teacher, so how can you not like math? Um, it was just not, not my best sport. But I made it. I got through. Made it to trig like trig. It was actually my last math class and I actually like trig. But we're in art here and in the art world it's a combination of what we know and then we let our feelings come through, right? I mean we don't do it for the calculated answer. We do it for the place where the human and the knowledge come together and combine to Make something really magical. Boy, his hand's looking a little dark there, but I think that will change when I bring out a little bit of the, the light. Okay, I'm in the 50%. I'm going to go back over a few spots with some 50 to put some more shadow in the face here. Um, I'm going to throw on this background also. I'm realizing I got a few edges here that are a little crispy, edgy from uh, the selections that didn't get a full, full value treatment. That's good. You guys stay in touch for sure, all right? Makes me happy when my peeps is staying networked, staying together. That's awesome. Hope you guys are doing well in this new year. You know, I'm walking a lot. I'm getting some exercise. This is the year I'm trying to take care of myself. A little bit better this year. Doing some walking. Oh my God, I sound like a Geritol. Nothing against uh, the folks that are getting up there a little bit, but I'm at the age where running is just too hard on my body. It's just too hard on my body. I can do it, but it causes injuries and, you know, foot problems and muscle problems, knee problems. I got knee, I got knees, man. I got knee problems. I played sports growing up. But I'm finding that when I when I twist my knee or I have some sort of injury, the recovery time isn't very good. And then I'm sore and life's a pain and everything's... So believe it or not, walking and doing regular, regular walking. Uh, we have a treadmill, so I'm hitting the treadmill. Feeling good, though, I have to say. Eating better. My wife and I are doing veggie smoothies and I have to give my wife the credit because she she has been really doing a lot of the the prep on it and the making of them and I, I, I'm just like yes I will eat one <laughs> and then I get all the benefit and I don't have to do any of the work so God bless her for uh, for for caring enough to include me um but yeah, we've been doing a lot of veggie smoothies and I've been trying to walk and so it's going good. Feeling starting a year out right. 
<laughs> getting old is interesting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, but you guys ain't ain't as old as. A, pardon me. Listen to me. I sound like some sort of country bumpkin here. Um, you guys are not as old uh, as I am. At least my friends here in the chats. But but still, changes happen to your body. And uh, pretty soon, things that she thought would last forever or would bounce back, don't bounce back. And then you're like, oh, my God, is this what getting old is? And um, and it's okay. I don't mind. I'm trying to do it gracefully. But I can say this. Start early. Set good routines. Eat well. You know, make good decisions. And start when you're younger so that you're not playing so much catch-up when you get older. Okay, just so you know, in case you're like, where the hell is he now? I can't tell where his cursor is. Um, I'm going to come down here on this scarf a little bit more. And I'm going to darken some of this in. Again, what am I doing here? Just a real, real recap here. I am sort of going through this thing and building up the tones. And I'm in that place where the process is there, but I'm also just listening to what my instincts are telling me. Process always gets me started, tells me what the next step is, what do I need to do, categorically where are we headed. But eventually, it does become a thing where your instincts start going, ooh, fix that, and ooh, fix that, and do a little bit of this over here and a little bit of that over there. And that's where I am at right now which is that I'm in that place where now I'm kind of just letting my things I see tell me where I need to go rather than having to be so systematic about it. And I'd say that the values are happening nicely. I'm not 100% comfortable with all of them, but they are coming along. Hmm. But I'm over here in the scarf. And I'm kind of implying a little bit of texture here. I don't do the dashing thing. <laughs> oh, wait, I've been missing the combo here. What's happening? DoorDash, a healthy choice. <laughs> Actually, not giving, not doing delivery. We are actually um, cooking. We're doing more cooking now than we ever have. And I have to say, this is a necessary thing when you become a parent because you're teaching your child how to take care of themselves. And if they grow up thinking that everything is takeout, they're not going to have those skills, right? So I don't know. We've been trying to, first of all, save money, all right? Save money. Save money. That's all I got to say. Save money. When we first got married, we we definitely ate out more. But now we're like in the safe for college phase of our lives. And so every penny counts. And so we are definitely conscientious about eating out. Plus, then the second thing is, one, you save money, but two, then you can prepare your meals, plan for better decisions. By the way, I'm in the neck now. I'm in the neck range, like around his his sort of scarf around his neck, around the back of the neck over here, kind of completing some of those values. Yes, yes. And eating, Ray Ray, I don't know if you're still with us, but yes, if you're dealing with solids and babies. <laughs> oh my God. That stuff, it's been a while for me because that, that was such a great phase, but that was also, there was some tough years in there. 
Those are very trying years. Because, yeah, babies start eating solids and they start making a solid, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, that gets fun. Not. Um, but. Understandable, a real part of the, the equation. <laughs> I haven't thought about those terms in a while. Solids. Solid. <clears throat> I saw Tina. Was that who was that? Solid as a rock. Yeah, Tina Turner. I saw Tina Turner the other day on television. I don't think it was current though. I haven't seen Tina in a long time. Solid. <clears throat> All right, I'm dating myself now. Okay, I think that the scarf is looking good enough. Like, I think it. I have to be conscious that I don't over overwork something. Right? I want it to feel kind of sketchy drawn. I'm not trying to go for perfectly smooth here, so at some point I'm striking a nice vibe in there where I think the sketch and the marks that I make are are hitting the hitting the mark. They're getting a combination of that texture and value and rendering and the technique that um, it's time to step away. So I'm 50%. This is the part where it's probably hard for you guys to really track my movements and watch because I really am jumping all over the place. And so finding like, where's his cursor now? And I'm not working very big. So I, I can imagine for you guys that you can't find <laughs> where I'm at. You know, they used to make those like little part of the app that finds your cursors. Kind of highlight where your cursor is. Can you're giving demonstrations so that people can see where your cursor is? Okay, now I'm down here in the jacket. And if you're not following, no sweat. You do you. Get your work done. If you're up right now working on a computer, it's probably because you're getting work done. So I get it. No offense. Yogurt drops. <laughs> that sounds a little gross, too. I think I would gag also on yogurt drops. <laughs> it do Doesn't it? Doesn't yogurt drop sound kind of gross? It sounds kind of gross to me. I think if I were a kiddo, I'd be like, um, yeah, that's gross. But it it's it's moving on from milk, right? It's moving on like past the dairy or with dairy, but a little more flavor. We didn't do yogurt drops though. Okay, I'm erasing some of my fifty percent here. In my I'm down in the hands now. Hmm. All right, so I think, um, how can I not overwork this and keep an eye on my time, too? How long am I in for right now? Would have been over an hour? I'll at least go an hour and a half, so at least this session. Um, so we got at least another 20 minutes or so. But I have some edges that are starting to bug me a little bit because the selection that I made to separate the art from the background wasn't that accurate. So that means I'm going to come back down to some of my selection edges and do some erasing. So for instance, look over here. 
I'm looking at this hand and see some of the selections I made early around this hand are really bad selections. They were just done very quickly. So I am either I have to make some decisions here. I either have to fill it with something or I have to kind of trim it. I'm trying to figure out what what is going on there. Background off. Oh, I see. Okay. Let's do this. Boop. I got to fix a few of these edges because they are really not nice. Hmm. Let's do this format. Oh, there we go. Well, that kind of helped. I I have to remember that I am planning to do a toned background. And I was getting a little bit far away from that. So let's see here. Got to clean up my edges on this hand. All right. Carry on, carry on if you're nothing to see here. <laughs> um, but I do have to figure out where these marks are constructed. So let's see here. Is that, what is that shenanigans? Okay. Hmm. I see. Okay. Oh, you did. Nice. You bought the bigger tablet, Sethos. Good for you, man. Did you? Are you like how big? Are you at the the big one, the big screen, twenty seven inch? Or are you like, because they make a real nice in-between one now. Isn't it like 17 or something? And it's got the display in it, right? So you're actually seeing what you're... So you can see here, if you are following along, that I'm coming back in and erasing some of the extra loose stuff around the edges of the drawing where I... Where some of those sketch lines are actually outside of the hand now that I've kind of rendered it a little bit more. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit of these edges around the hand. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but some of them are really, they're making it difficult. To see the form because it's, it's, it's looking a little rough. So I'm cleaning up a few of those edges. And I'm going to have to make a decision. Like, am I going to go come in from the background or do I need to paint over Okay, there we go.
I'm going to concentrate a little bit here. But it's big enough. What is it? I can't afford the 27. Hey, no, no shame in that game, dude. Um, it took me many years <laughs> to get to the point where I could actually purchase this. Um, and it was kind of out of necessity. At a, I had a gig or two that I was going to be able to, it would make a difference in the speed of getting the work done. So, you know, eventually it became something I kind of had to do, but you can definitely, I think whatever method that you work in digitally, as long as you build your working pathway to accommodate the way that you get work done. For instance, for me, I wanted something big enough that I could draw at the same size I do on paper. 11 by 14, 9 by 12, 11 by 17 are very standard paper sizes that I used to work at a lot, uh, still do, but um, I didn't want to go to a tablet and then suddenly be doing this, like really, really small, right? So I wanted to be able to have something in front of me that's like almost the same size as paper that I normally draw on uh, in, in the physical, in the natural medium. And so that's why I went with it, but it took me a while. So what'd you say? You got a, you got the, t you're at 22. That's a great size. That's a great size. I have to say in some ways, the 27 is not entirely necessary. I think even at 22, I could probably get the same feeling. The only thing the 27 helps out I've noticed is that the side menus and palettes that you want open, it gives you that extra little side room to have a palette open also. Um, so that that's the only thing that's kind of an advantage, but I don't think you have to. I I really don't. I don't there's hardly much difference there. By the time you're at that at that stage, there's there's not much difference. So in case you're looking, I'm over here, kind of coming around the. Cleaning up the edges. Ooh. This is the problem. I used a gradient on my background. I should probably use the, um, instead of using a brush, I should use the clone tool. Because that way I'm sampling from the, the same area. And that should do okay. Hmm. That's not looking so hot either. I had a hundred percent. Yes. Let's pick a different brush, maybe. Too much change. Okay, that didn't work so hot. Back to the picker. And again, I'm in. I'm in the small areas which are probably not going to make a huge difference but I just need to clean up a little bit of those lines okay so it's a little cleaner there All right, so the hand's looking a little bit better. I got to make sure the edge of this jacket down here looks good, so I'm not so jazzed about that. This is the part where it's probably going a little slow for you folks, and I apologize that it's not super, but this is where rendering takes over, right? And you can't, there are some things you can't speed up. You can't, you can't speed up some of these things. Drawing is drawing is drawing.
little darker in there. Okay. Okay. What else is jumping out at me? So I'm going to leave that hand alone for a little bit because there's a few other things I think that are jumping out at me. So for one, I think I have to do something with the edge of this picture because just pictorially speaking, um, the corner of the picture is, as you can see over here in the lower right, is is just standing out. So I think I need to pick my gray here, which I'm going to guess is probably 50%. And I'm just going to cover the rest of this side of this page up. By the way, I use the pastel a lot, I have to say. So if you're kind of curious, like, well, what brush do you use and all that? And I don't think it really matters all that much. I mean, I'm not somebody that, that believes that the brushes make the artist. <laughs> they better not be the thing that makes the artist. But um, but if you're curious, I like to sketch a lot with the, uh, the pastels because they, I think they act and behave very much like like a lot of pencils in opaque mediums like that that I, that I'm very comfortable with in natural medium so for me I like them I like them okay all right so the edge of the page is kind of covered there do I need to do any more with this 70% in these sketchy lines. I don't know. Maybe. Let's see. I'm talking about the corner of the picture now. I'm talking about the corner of the picture. I'm talking about um, these lines down here. I'm trying to create a, something that kind of fades out but is not as distracting. So I'm adding a little bit of this is again where I had sketched original you know sketchy lines under there but I it's mostly because I just don't want anything to look too distracting. Sudden changes or abrupt I don't mind the sketchy look. It's kind of what I'm going for. But Okay. I know you can't really tell where I'm at, but I'm kind of bumping all over. I'm looking in the 70% range. I'm kind of working in this, the darker range. Yeah, good old animation bond. I love that paper. <clears throat> I love sketching on that stuff. I'm up in the hat. Yeah, I was talking about this a little bit at the beginning, but um, somewhere in there, my values are going to merge with sort of texture lines because what is texture right texture or light and dark light and dark light and dark at a certain frequency and somewhere in there those light and dark frequencies communicate something that could be kind of a texture created by hand 
by the drawing tool, or it could be more of the texture that's actually on the surface of the, of the thing you're rendering, or somewhere both. Um, and somewhere in there, um, there will be a choice.